in Tophrei Shutes. The night of Yom Kippur, Noagim Shom Mishlech Tzib Yishiv Yishal Malo, Yishiv Yishal Mato. We speak about the Yishiv Yishal Malo, the heavenly tribunal, and Yishiv Yishal Mato. Al Dasa Mokom, Al Dasa Kol, with the permission of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and with the understanding of the congregation, we permit, it's permitted to daven with the Avrayonim, with the transgressors. Avrayonim are transgressors. Mm-hmm. And after you say that, mm-hmm. we say the Kol Nidre. speak about it. Then we say Shechionu below coast, of course, without a coast. Normally we say Shechionu in Kiddush. <coughs> Here we say Shechionu in Shul. I mean, a woman says Shechionu on, on the Neros, right, when she, she lights candles, see him keep her. <laughs> the Godlu Shbeir, the most, the, the greatest person, whether he's the Talmud Chochem or the, what we call the Parnos, the person who is recognized as the leader of the community, he's the one who says the Kol Nidre. And he has to have two other because you have a Bezdin, Bezdin is three. And that's the reason why you have the person who's Kol Nidre to take out two Sifri Torah. Right? And they have the person standing, one to his right, one to his left, when they say the Kol Nidre. Vomri Bishivo, Shay Yeshivas Maskim and Lutzar of Dasamokum Dasakol, Lahatir Savarionim, Me Abri Nusan. We'll see in a moment. We need the heavenly tribunal and the earthly tribunal that Hashem should be included. The Tsarev Dasamokum. A transgressor is one who violated something that was legislated by the community or transgressed the Torah law, rabbinic law. What about a person still in the state of excommunication? Right? Which we call Nido Yacherim. He's still in the excommunicated state. He wasn't released from the excommunicated state. He's not included in Minya. Person who's a cherem or a nido, he's not included within the minion. It's interesting. Many years ago, somebody was visiting New York from out of town, and like years ago, when neighbors were changing, so he had many shuls that none of them had a minion. Said he would stand on the stoop. They had this years ago on the Lower East Side, and they would, you know, he had one building after each one was a shul. None of them had a minion. They had eight people, nine people, and they would call you in. Yeah, David Tessel went down the street with his towels and filling. Not 63rd, 61st. 63rd, we didn't have a problem. 61st Street. So, um, he goes into the shul in Brooklyn. This person was visiting from the Midwest, Flatbush, and walks in. And he immediately comes in. There's this Hasidic rabbi with a few of his sons. Couldn't imagine. Usually he had a shtibel, not able to have a minion. You know, the wife serves a good kiddush on Shabbos, you have a minion, not, not a problem. Afterwards, he found out that this particular person was excommunicated. So, because he was a cherem, nobody would go there. Now, they're not permitted to go there. Him and his children, they, whatever they did, I have no idea. So, again, so he's saying, regardless of a person's avaryan, he's a transgressor, he can be counted in the minion, but if a person's in nidu, he is excommunicated, he cannot be counted in the, in the davish of the <laughs> if you have a minion, this person wants to come to shul, you can tell him you're not permitted to remain in the shul, even if you don't count them into the minion. There was a case in uh, Deal, New Jersey. It's fired and they're very strong on this, that this person was an informer. And the person came to shul, the rabbi got up from the pulpit, he said, excuse me, please leave. Embarrassed him, it didn't make a difference. You're a former, please leave. You have a right to do that. 
He says, even if you have a minion, you permitted to put the man out of the shul. He should not come into the shul. Chol gamli snas lahachmi shul ispal imo beisga af sheish b'shem asoro. Lord is a minion. B'shem a hisnu al kem atirin onu. He says, maybe that's the reason why. Well, matir k'dei shulu chol ispal imo and the chol tayis yib shem bom pushi. So I think you're tainus. He says, what's the reason when Yom Kippur, yes, then Yom Kippur, why do we go out of a way to be, allow even the transgressor? Here he's told me, even the transgressor. We're not even talking about a person who was a cherem. A person does something serious. The, the shul has a right to have a policy. We don't want those kinds of people in the shul. You know, the, the two customs, you know, in terms of cemeteries, you know, the, the cemeteries, the Hebra Kadisha set the rules in the cemetery. They set the rules. The ones who own, own the, the plots and they sell it on the condition. For instance, understood a man who's married to a non Jewish a non Jew, they're not gonna let him be buried in the cemetery. Many Khabakadish have that, that policy. If he did not divorce his wife, whatever she did, you need to divorce. But if he died, he was married to a non Jew, they will not let him be buried in that in the Jewish section of the cemetery. What about a person of Khalo Shabbos? Do they allow him to be buried in in, in that same section? I know the Yekis are very, very makbid, very careful about this. person is Machal Shabbos, they will not allow him to be buried in the, sec- in, in that, in, in the section with people with Shabbos Shabbos. Whatever it is, they don't allow it. Whatever, the find, person will find himself in another, another section, another, it's another cemetery. Besides the different customs, burying men and women together, do you have couples buried next to one another, or you have men and, and women separate? These are all api kapola. They have the different, they have different customs. Yeah, why, what about Shuvah? What about this guy? This he didn't do Shuvah, this man. He, he's coming to Shuvah for a reason. Not from the shul it's like, you know, years shul. ago that a Shul, I think it still was called the Wolf Street Synagogue. It's still there. Still there. The rabbi just passed away. So people, if Yom Kippur came out in the middle of the week, the people, you know, they, 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 walk, they would come for, say, Yisker, and they would say, Rabbi, I brought my checkbook. You know, they write the check on Yom Kippur. But they're coming to shul, if or what. That's not shuva. That's not shuva. It's not shuva. Ramosha has a shuva. Ramosha has a shuva. If a person violates Shabbos, let's say, deliberately, not to him, he doesn't know any better. He grew up, was raised. He's considered mum l'chol t'orukulo. He's considered as if he's, you know, he rejected the whole Torah its entirety. It's like, <coughs> he's like a pagan. Mar says he's like an Ovid Avodazor, like a Jew, but God forbid, becomes an, a pagan. Right? He becomes an apostate. There's no question he cannot be counted in the minion. No, not even a question. Right? So what a person was raised Orthodox, and then he chose, for whatever reason, he left it. Could he be counted a minion? It's not simple. Could you give him an aliyah? So good, there were many, Rameh, Moshe holds it's better not to give him an aliyah. If he can, because of why did he leave, because he really doesn't appreciate it today with all the various influences, it's not something we call what we call, the, the person even is in touch with his, with his Yiddishkeit to that degree that it's like he's at a point today where it's almost like the past had no impact on him. But it's, it's already, he says, it, but it's better not to be such a person, not Leah. Because when he says the brocha, I mean, how does he make this declaration of whatever he says? He doesn't even believe in it. Because if you really believe in it, the person doesn't observe Shabbos, that means it's irrelevant to you whether God created the world or not. Right? It's irrelevant to him. So if it's irrelevant, you know something? So if that means God is irrelevant to you, okay? Then your, your pronunciation, enunciation of the brocha means nothing. But very often you have a shul, you know, a person comes for, for, for uh, your site. You have to give him an aliyah. The whole shul is comprised of that. Right? Then comes Shabbos, the man demands he wants to have mafter or shlishi, whatever he wants to have. Or he, he got out of the taxi three blocks away from the shul. Because that, that, that much respect he has. And he'll leave his wallet in the, in, the, in the cloakroom. He won't bring that into shul with him. So you don't see him bulging. Okay? Not without Shuva. Not without Shuva doesn't tell. We don't rule like Ramey. But okay, but we don't rule this way. So good. Unless you do Shuva, your kibber has no value whatsoever. 
on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur. It could, it could is irrelevant. The question is, did, did he do tshuva? Did he not do tshuva? It's not what he could have. You know, every Russia could do tshuva. You know, he could, but until he does tshuva, his classification is Russia. <coughs> they let him. They, that's what it says over here. You let him. Talk about something else, giving an aliyah. That's what I'm talking about. What do we include, even these people, especially on a tiny seaboard? So he says, One of the ingredients of the incense offering was chelbim, it had a foul smell. But when you intermingle it with the others, it brings out certain qualities of the other, of the other ingredients. So therefore it's important that he should be included. The whole intent is what? Is to annul, to, to nullify the norm shuas that people had made, who had taken oaths, and they violated it. This is what we call the the serious mode of what we do. You know, we first will mat in error, and at the end, after the the panel responds, we give we make a disclaimer. Any oath or vow or whatever in the future should be considered nothing. So he says. Therefore, Rabbi Tam says we say miyom kipurim ze ad yom kipurim habo aleinu. We're speaking. This is a disclaimer for the future. The matter should not come into effect. No, no, so the question is, if we every year we make a disclaimer, so well, what do I have to do? I have to ask the Dorim, right? So that's what he says here in the brackets. What about at the time that you made the netter or the shvur during the year, the following year, you recall the disclaimer, and despite recalling the disclaimer, you made the netter and the shvur. So what are you doing? So you're actually you're saying it's irrelevant, the disclaimer's irrelevant. So that's why we, if a person didn't remember that he made the disclaimer, so the netter and shua is nothing, he doesn't have to nullify it. But since it's possible that he made it despite that, so then the disclaimer has no value. So we, every year we'll mat the netter in case he had remembered the disclaimer when he made the netter or the shua. But if he remembers, the disclaimer, and despite that, he makes the netter. Hare Oker, Hatanai, he's actually, he's nullified the precondition. And that's, we conduct stuff like Rabbi Nutam. We say in the, in the Kol Nidre, the netter that will be made, and the sure that will, the oath that will be taken. We, we say dindarno. Loshin zegam lahabo mashma. Yomru meashlech tzibalachish. Kol nitri should be said by the kol along. Oh, that's where we do it. We say it. They tenai shlech mobile. Why? What's the reason? Because each person has to be matter his own nether, right? Somebody else can't nullify your nether. Person has to make the statement himself. Therefore, we should say it along with the shlech tzibal be continued. So the bottom line is that you know, that they shouldn't let a uh, transgressor into the uh, community? You do let them. So then how do the people in deal with No, no, no. That was during the year. It had nothing to do with this. person was an informer. He was an informer. He went and went to the government, squealed on somebody, put people in prison. That's what he did. That's an informer. Climaxes with the third. Yeah.